How big of a problem is testosterone deficiency syndrome in Australia? As a syndrome or as a problem that's recognised, it's uh, quite a large problem. As unrecognised, it's an even greater problem. And uh, I expect that we'll find that the problem is even far greater than we estimate today. Um, probably in Australia, I think the recognition is greater than it is here in the UK. Um, I know Dr Carruthers estimates about 20% of the population have uh, testosterone deficiency syndrome, and that's certainly accurate. Um, but uh, one of the projects I'm involved in in Australia at the moment is treating both men and women with Alzheimer's disease, and we're having quite dramatic results in uh, treatment with testosterone. So we know that testosterone is a significant factor in a, a number of medical conditions, heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, um, depressive illness, but also in Alzheimer's disease. And uh, if you consider the prevalence of these conditions in our society today, particularly with an ageing population, uh, not only is it a, a quality of life issue, uh, it's a risk of dying issue, and from uh, a more broad perspective, a, um, an issue for governments and people looking at economics because uh, the cost of these conditions is enormous. So uh, underlying these very common conditions is in many cases a, at least a contributing factor of testosterone deficiency. We hear here in the UK of a certain amount of resistance from the medical profession towards testosterone, testosterone replacement therapy. Is the same true in Australia? Oh, well, certainly it's true in Australia. It's uh, almost a, a global phenomenon and it is difficult to understand why that is the case today with uh, increasing evidence accumulating that indicates not only that testosterone replacement therapy is uh, effective, but it's also increasingly being shown to be extremely safe. And the concerns that were held for many years about uh, giving men testosterone, particularly in relation to things like prostate cancer, uh, have been shown now in a number of um, uh, well-researched studies to, to really be nothing but, but a myth. And uh, indeed, it appears to be low testosterone levels themselves that are contributing uh, in, in the greatest fashion to, um, to prostate risk. Talk to me about this work that you're doing in Alzheimer's. Mm. Uh, the Alzheimer's work started a little by accident. Um, for many years I've been treating men with testosterone deficiency syndrome and uh, found that a number of them had some thinking, cognitive type changes, memory changes, and uh, indeed for many of those men this was a presenting symptom, that uh, they had a problem with memory. So I was approached by a professor at Edith Cowan University, Professor Ralph Martins, who was in fact Western Australian of the Year last year, and um, Ralph uh, was interested in studying these men. He'd been working on animal models, he, he's not a medical practitioner, but um, he'd been working on animal models of Alzheimer's disease and uh, the basic pathology there with Alzheimer's is the development of amyloid, uh, which is a, a protein which is deposited in plaques in the brain. And uh, he had found uh, that um, amyloid levels were related to low levels of testosterone, and the lower the testosterone level went, the higher the amyloid level went. So we thought that if we were treating men with testosterone, that there was a possibility that there would be some improvement in their memory and indeed there was. We had some very promising results from that initial pilot study. And uh, so last year, about 18 months ago, when um, uh, Professor Martins was uh, faced with a, a case uh, in a um, woman with Alzheimer's, he actually works for an um, organisation called the McCusker Foundation in Perth that uh, is involved in Alzheimer's research. And um, this uh, woman was in her early 30s with three young children and family history uh, was uh, mother and sister had both developed Alzheimer's in their early 30s and died within about a two to three year period. So very dramatic, very um, tragic uh, time of life to get such an aggressive disease. A genetic variation of Alzheimer's, not the common sort. So it was felt under those circumstances it might be reasonable to try a therapeutic trial of testosterone. And when I first saw uh, this patient um, she simply came in and was led into the surgery and sat without contributing anything at all to the conversation, uh, but did agree by nodding uh, with relatives that um, we could proceed and uh, treat her with testosterone, which we've done with implant pellets. And uh, 
A month later she returned, smiling, chatting, telling a joke. She'd started playing with her children again. It was a very dramatic turnaround in symptoms. Now, we're not anticipating, and indeed there's no evidence that we're stopping her Alzheimer's. However, 18 months later, she is still better than she was 18 months ago, when we would, under the terms of uh, what would naturally have happened, we would have expected her to not be around any longer. So for her quality of life, for her children's quality of life, the family, we think we've made a, an enormous difference. Um, Professor Martins mentioned this at a meeting in uh, the not too recent, well, not too distant past, a uh, public meeting at the Perth Public Library whereupon uh, he was flooded with requests for treatment with testosterone and a number of those people have come on to see me and I now have I think about 15 or 16 patients, generally elderly, although we have three of the very young familial type of Alzheimer's patients there. Um, we have a significant group now of people being assessed and measured uh, in terms of cognitive function and their Alzheimer's disease and showing very significant improvement in symptoms uh, of their Alzheimer's. So our hope with the older age group uh, is that we can delay the process, slow it down to the point where uh, ultimately it is uh, that these people are going to be able to live a normal life expectancy. But we're a long way from that at the moment. It's still very early days in the research, but it's very interesting. Fascinating stuff.